Hello, I'm Toycat and welcome back to the second channel Geography Video. This is a series where I talk about geography and the world and stuff. And today I'm finally going to be talking about Australia. That's right, the island that is so big it gets considered its own continent. I wanted to talk about this place because it's, you know, in the context of the British Empire, it's a colony that got so big that it ends up with its own colonies. And although you might object to that term, Australia does have a very complex multi-layer, you know, because most people think of Australia as just being this huge thing right here. But the truth is, Australia is made up of six states combined with some, you know, internal territory combined with some external territories, which you might think of as their own countries, such as Christmas Island, and uh, in the today's video, we'll be getting to the bottom of all of those territories and states, etc. And a uh, fun fact to kind of spoil that for later, Australia is so big, it actually borders France. That sounds insane, but let me explain in today's video. So let me start by explaining just how big Australia is. The reason I'm using the Earth view here is to really drive home, again, how big this place is, because when you, you know, you think Australia, you see this thing and you're like, oh yeah, that's an island, that's kind of a cute little thing, but the truth is it is a continental landmass you know, by the official books, and uh, I think the best way to show this off is to use the true size of .com. So, as you can see, Australia, when you overlay it on Australia, it looks the normal size, but because it's so close to the equator, it means it actually is kind of unfairly-ish represented on maps. Again, uh, unfairly is a weird word, but basically the further south you go, the bigger country looks because of Mercator squeezing. Again, try and place a map onto a globe and you'll understand that, but now just understand that Australia is way bigger than you figure, being about the size of all of Europe combined, it's bigger than the 48 continuous states, it's almost the size of Canada, and basically, it's a big old country. So, yeah, Australia, the sixth largest country on Earth. It's something you really need to appreciate, that it's the sixth largest country of, like, the twelfth largest or thirteenth largest economy, depending on how you want to measure that one. But still, it's a huge country in terms of any major measurable, uh, you know, statistic. So that is Australia. You've got to keep it in mind that it is an important thing. It's not just a cute thing in the corner there. Real important country. So, why do I reference that? Why do I reference the size of Australia and that uh, the other sort of thing? It's because the one measure where Australia falls real short is population. About, you know, less, around 30 million people live there, but because it's such a large country, the population density is actually the second lowest in the world. So, uh, it's only beaten by Mongolia, or lost to by Mongolia. Uh, they have the second least dense population in the world, which basically means that every single state in Australia has one major city, and then the rest of it is nothing. If you zoom in at a random point anywhere in Australia, it's probably going to be pure nothingness like this. Like, oh, that's just a barren wasteland, and if we zoom out a bit, more barren wasteland. And you have to zoom out pretty far before you find any settlement of any size, because most of Australia is unpopulated, and that includes the entirety of the centre, let's just say. Because again, like I said, every, uh, there's six states in Australia, again, we'll talk about the, uh, the territories in a little bit, but there's six states in Australia, there's Western Australia, there's South Australia, there's New South Wales, Victoria, Queensland, and there is Tasmania. So, for now, we'll just talk about the main landmass of Australia, and talk about the five major states, because each of those has pretty much just one major city in their territory, and they're all located by the coast. So, uh, even the secondary cities, which are nowhere near as big, are also, also on the coast, but there is one major population centre where about half the population of each of these major places lives. So, for instance, in Western Australia, despite taking up the entire third of the, you know, like, Western third of the, uh, you know, like, third, uh, sixth largest country on Earth, there's pretty much one city, and it's Perth found over here. And, you know, Perth is a large city by itself, but it's one city in the entirety of their state, pretty much. I mean, there's other cities, but they're not, like, major things. Uh, then we go to South Australia, and you're like, oh yeah, this is a this is a pretty big one too, if you want to see the, the borders better, here it is. Uh, and then you're like, okay, so how, how many big cities does it have? Oh, it has one too. Adelaide, which is found just over here. Okay, that's kind of nice, I guess. What about New South... I mean, I'm sure you get where this is going. With Victoria, you've got Melbourne found just over here, which is one of the major... Uh, tourist attractions and big cities to go to. New South Wales is the most populated state because it has the most populated city, which is Sydney. A lot of people assume it is the capital, but again, we'll get into that later because it's not because of weird reasons. Uh, then we also have Queensland up here, which has Brisbane all the way in the corner next to New South Wales. And then there's a few settlements, again, along the entire coast, uh, places that totally want to be real, like Townsville, very real name for a place right there. But no, seriously, most of these settlements are along the coast and most of the settlement population is within one city for each of the states. And that kind of just shows the disparity in population uh, density. One of my favorite ways, in fact, uh, by the way, sixth state, Tasmania, same thing with Hobart, just not quite as severe. But, uh, you know, one of my favorite ways to show off, like, population density is in terms of political maps. Because, again, uh, political maps are usually tried to base on population to some extent. So here is a map of, uh, you know, uh, each of the districts for the 1999 referendum when Australia voted to get rid of the monarchy. They, they didn't, by the way. Uh, but here is the map showing just how large some of the districts are. So, same country we just looked at, uh, you know, Perth has, like, its own, like, 10 to 12 districts. Uh, you know, the other cities have, like, 20, 30, 40. 
Uh, whereas all of Western Australia, besides this little corner here, it's one district combined. All of like <laughs> uh, South Australia, besides like again just that bit there, one district. All of the Northern Territory, the place in Australia we haven't covered yet, all one uh, district because that's how vast these population differences are. So yeah, now now that that's driven in, I hope we have a, a good frame of reference for just how <laughs> you know empty the centre is. And uh, again, to, to kind of show it with more fun, if we go to map view. You can see that there is like a major north-south road, but most of the major north-south road is pretty much nothingness. Like, in most places you'd expect like a major meeting of two roads like this to be like, oh yeah, so they'll set up like some, you know, like some hotels, like a little town, something will start there, because it's, you know, there's two roads, there's gonna be so much traffic, but like, there are two, there are roads crossing here, but then there is uh, nothing for the entire distance. So yeah, that's that's the crazy thing about Australia. Uh, you, you can't really traverse the inside of the continent, and you know you you might do it if you really have to drive one side or the other. But otherwise, it's not a continent that you really want to be driving across. Uh, you know, it's, it's usually faster to fly, and uh, yeah, just keep that in mind. So, let's talk about the Northern Territory, since we're here here, uh, here now, because I mentioned there's six states, and I've covered five on the island, and then Tasmania. What's the deal with this, and why is it not a state too? Again, this is one of the things that's just kind of brushed by when you, like, cover Australia, like, oh, it's divided into states, but the Northern Territory isn't a state, as its name might suggest, it's actually a territory owned by the federal government. So, Again, the closest analogy you can find for this is like, oh, the US, uh, you know, owns DC. No state owns DC. The US as a whole owns DC. Uh, Guam, uh, Puerto Rico, etc. owned by the country itself. Same, uh, you know, goes for any other country of states if the country owns stuff, like Canada. Uh, it's, it's the same kind of model. And basically, the Northern Territory is owned by Australia as a whole, but it's com it's more complex than that. So yeah, this is the Northern Territory. Uh, the history of it is that it used to be part of South Australia. It broke away because uh, the mil you know during World War II the the military needed it, so they're like we'll separate it. And they really they it came really really close to being called Kingsland just to match Queensland, which would have been a nice nicer name than Northern Territory. But either way, uh, they, yeah, Northern Territory is this huge chunk right here. It was taken by the military and then never quite given back. And uh, there's only one major settlement, which is Darwin. And you know, following the you know the <laughs> everyone's favorite pattern of like having everything be so far away from the coast. We've got Darwin being the only major settlement all the way up here. And Darwin is like 37 hours from Brisbane or like 40 hours from Perth. There's a lot of hours to get from Darwin to anywhere else, by the way, because it's just, it's a pretty remote place. And it's also, um, Intri intriguingly enough, one of the only times Australia's ever been attacked by another nation was during World War II. Darwin got bombed by the Japanese, and that's one of the reasons that Australia stopped aligning so much with the British and started aligning more, more with the US, but again, yeah, foreign policy stuff, not too relevant today. Uh, but yeah, let's just uh, quickly mention that, yeah, Darwin, all the way out there, very, very separate place. And let's mention the fact that the Northern Territory, although it is kind of a territory, it has self-governance, it's just that self-governance can be overruled. So, for instance, the Northern Territory, again, they have apparently a pretty progressive par parliament because uh, they voted on laws to make it so you could have voluntary euthanasia, like you could go there and you could be euthanized if you were, you know, had sickness, etc. It was one of the few laws like that in the world, and the federal Australian government said, nah, nah, mate, can't, can't be doing that. And yeah, therefore they stopped it because even though they have their own parliament, it can be overruled, unlike with Western Australia or Queensland or any of the other states. So that's the key difference. They also get less senators, and uh, at one point they were offered, like, you know, like a, a big deal to have it happen, but they voted against it. It's a complex situation. It's likely going to change. Let's just say for now, Northern Territory, not a state. You might disagree with that. I think there's not too much of a good reason to agree with it, but again, I'm sure it's a deep issue that if you dig into for many, many hours, you might get somewhere. But to me, it just seems like, oh yeah, well, it's a place where the federal government wants to overrule things, because why not, right? I mean, why would you not do that? So yeah, that's the Northern Territory. And there's also two other places, because you might have noticed I haven't mentioned the capital of Australia. You know, you might think it's Sydney, but it's actually uh, found in the Australian Capital Territory, or the ACT, if you like fancy acronyms, because Canberra is actually the capital of uh, you know Australia. So again, this is a uh, this is a constructed capital, and it's funny because the reason for uh, this existing, the reason they needed an Australian capital territory, and the reason it's located where it was, is because the two biggest cities in Australia by population. Gotta gotta always clarify that. But the two largest cities in Australia, Sydney and Melbourne, had a big debate over who should be the capital. And uh, guess what the compromise meant? Yeah, why don't we make one roughly halfway between us? So yeah, actually, funnily enough, the the lack of cooperation between the states in Australia is one of its defining elements because you know Australia is made up of six major states and they all have lots of disagreements on pretty much everything. One of the reasons the Northern Territory won't become a state is because they don't want to give it the same powers as all of them. Uh, one of the reasons that getting around Australia by anything but flying or 40 hour train, uh, car ride is because why would they work on like some links together? They don't really want to cooperate in that way. Again, it's a really fascinating you know structure. 
that it is lots of states that don't really like cooperation too much. <laughs> and uh, yeah, part of that is their territory, is their capital, which had to be a compromise between the two biggest ones. And there's something perfect about that to me. But yeah, so Australian capital territory, it mostly just includes Canberra and the surround, it's Canberra, by the way, not Canberra, but Canberra and the surrounding areas. It looks something like this. And that is, uh, again, it's not great for tourism, but it's a place that they make laws and stuff, you might be on board of it, and therefore it's not governed by any state, it's governed by the uh, thing as a whole. There's also uh, the Jarvis Bay uh, territory, so this is, um, or Jarvis Bay, I mean, you can say Jarvis Bay, I'm sure, but yeah, the Jarvis Bay territory is this thing right here, but as you can see, uh, it's just a, it's a bay with about 400 people living there. The reason it's a territory and not part of New South Wales, New South Wales was forced to concede it, because um, in case the, uh, you know, Canberra ever wanted to have a, a port, it was like, oh, well, we wouldn't want one of the states to extort us, so give us the land now, and then we'll make a port or, like, a nuclear plant there later, and then they just kind of never did. But now there's a beach there, and 400 people live in this weird limbo place of not being part of the state. So, yeah, weird little anomalies. They happen even in Australia. Isn't that wonderful? So, yeah, that's the Jervis Bay. Jervis Bay. Call it whatever you want, you know? Call it the Jervy Bay if you really want to. I won't stop you, but an Australian person might. So, yeah, let's move on from now. That's because they're the three internal territories. Let's talk a little bit about Tasmania, because I have kind of missed it a little bit. So, this is the, um... This is the sixth state, and I just want to kind of briefly mention that, like, yep, Tasmania, it's not part of the mainland, but it is a core, integral part of Australia. It has a way lower population than the rest of them. Like, one of the big arguments against the Norm Territory's accession to statehood is that its population is really low, uh, about 250,000, but it's only double that in Tasmania, with, like, less than a million people living there, and it's like, okay, then, so Tasmania, it is its own state, but it's got some cool stuff and some, and, you know, it's got, because even though Australia as a whole has exclusive wildlife like kangaroos and koala bears and lots more stuff, uh, Tasmania, of course, uh, I would, you know, it'd, it'd be silly not to mention this one, has the Tasmanian Devil, which actually looks like this. I mean, the, the Tasmanian Devil you're thinking of is this one right here, right? Uh, no idea how that uh, came to be, but it's based on this animal right here, and there's a bunch of other, like, nature things, and, like, it's a it's a very important nature part of, um, you know, Australia, and it does have a couple of major cities, a uh, few, like, major attractions in Hobart, I know, but uh, it is one of those things where it's like, it just, it, it's not quite on the same level, but it is technically a state as much as everyone else, and I offended everyone from Tasmania. I'm sorry, I don't mean it like that. So, next, let's talk about the external territories of Australia, because now we've covered the empire, uh, sorry, we've covered the, the internal territories, the stuff that's like, you know, this is country, this is country. Now let's cover the, again, the, the Guam equivalent, the like, why, why do we own this? Or like the UK equivalent of like, oh, we own that island all, all the way by Argentina. So yeah, the equivalent of that with Australia is they own quite a lot of islands in some very uh, concerning places. First of all, we've got Norfolk Island, which is just over here. Norfolk Island is one of the most populated of the external territories. About 2,000 people live here, and they don't consider themselves Australia, but they are technically a part of Australia. They're Australian citizens, etc. Uh, they don't they don't consider themselves Australians. It's just like, well, I guess we're in Australia. That's a thing right there. And again, it's very, very remote, very far away from really any other landmass. And it was settled by the British, so it just kind of became a part of Australia, but like as a separate territory. It's its whole own story. Um, we've also got um, two interesting sets of islands, including... Um, one of my favorite named islands in the world, Christmas Island. So Christmas Island, named after Christmas, uh, got a whole story behind that. But my favorite thing is that their capital is called Flying Fish Cove. There's there's an airport, there's Flying Fish Cove, and that's that's kind of about it as far as what uh, happens here. Uh, I made a whole video about Christmas Island if you want to learn more, because for now, I try, I try to keep things like fairly short. Uh, go watch that if you want to learn more, but there's a place called Christmas Island. I'm sure that's the one fact. No matter what I say here, the one fact you'll take away is like, ah, huh, Christmas Island, part of Australia. Isn't that interesting? So, <laughs> uh, next let's talk about the Cocos or the Keeling Islands. Uh, it's got one of these, like, dual name things. So this is technically a set of atolls and islands, and it's it's lots of stuff all together. And they've got, there's an, a fascinating story behind this, because it voted, you know, they, um, so they were a part of the, Austra they were part of the Singapore colony, like, part of just the British Empire that was separate to Australia, but they actually wanted to join Australia. They had a whole referendum on it. But before the referendum, the entirety of the islands were owned by, like, the same family, and the Australian, uh, you know, like, uh, government basically said, We'll give you a lot of money, and we'll buy your land, or we'll take it off you if you don't take our money. It was a very weird thing, and it's like, I don't know how I feel about that one. If you like weird injustices of history, go look into it and have your own opinion. But for now, it's just like, that's an odd deal. There's this place really close, by the way, to uh, Indonesia. Closer to Indonesia, or to Singapore, or Malaysia, or really most of the countries around it than it is to Australia. And uh, they're a part of Australia. There's only 500 people living there, so it's like, I mean, I guess on terms of like, 
levels of mismanagement, it's not too hard, and like, they're a family that own the whole island, and like, that sounds a bit evil and stuff, but again, look into it, have your own moral judgment, I don't want to do this on geography, uh, you know, the geography videos, I just want to say, yeah. That's, that's, uh, that's an odd one. And yeah, there are flights, uh, subsidized flights to and from the Australian mainland at the Cook Island Airport. So you can go there sometime, uh, it's Cocoa Island, sorry, uh, airport. You can go there sometime if that's your thing. So, uh, yeah, I've covered three of them so far. Let's cover the next two. Uh, the first one here, I just have to mention, it's the most boring thing in the world, but the Ashmore Islands. Australia owns some islands. No one lives here. There's no intentions to do anything with them. Uh, it's also, it's technically the Ashmore and, uh, Cartier Island, because this thing exists too. They're just... They're non- they're non-islands, they're like random pieces of sand, basically, that happen to appear, and it's like, ah, oh, that might be something one day. It's definitely not today, and <laughs> it has no real interest to anyone. And then the second one here is technically in the same boat, so I can't even really show you it on Google Maps, uh, the best place to show you with OpenStreetMap, where you can roughly see where the islands appear, because the crazy thing is that, so the next islands are called the Coral Sea Islands Territory, and their islands, uh, there's about, you know, it's, it's hard to count the exact number, but most of them are underwater most of the time. So, they're islands that appear every now and then, and again, this would be another situation of like, that's boring, but four people do technically live there, and it's one of my favorite, you know, territories of Australia, because it was actually overtaken by the gay and lesbian kingdom. You might be like, what, what are you saying to a cat? Yes, some people actually uh, settled this as a micro kingdom, uh, sorry, a micro country, uh, the gay and lesbian kingdom. Their flag is of course the, uh, <laughs> is of course the rainbow flag, and they settled it under the assumption of like, well, you know, no gay rights in Australia. I think that's changed now, but no gay rights in Australia. Well, we'll take our own thing. So the gay and lesbian kingdom has their own website, like you can see here. They've got their own gay government, which I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there's there's something about that, right? I I have to you have to like it. They've got their own emperor, apparently. I I know. I'm just saying, isn't that beautiful? I don't know if I I like it. I like it. So yeah, crazy situation going on with the Coral Sea in uh, the fifth Australian external territory. Basically, the Australian government doesn't care. But there is an inter a, a fascinating just like aside here of like so at one point someone in uh, you know the capital tried to put a you know gay pride flag onto their building and you're not really meant to for political neutrality reasons. Again, it's a political topic and uh, the reason that they, they decided to take it down was because technically the flag of the gay and lesbian kingdom is the same as the pride flag, which and because the gay and lesbian kingdom took some of Australia's territory or like cut took so they're at war technically. Uh, they're like, oh, you should not put a hostile nation flag on your building and they're like ah you're right it is technically a hostile nation so they took down their gay pride flag so i don't know there's just something petty and beautiful about micro countries like that that i, I just have to mention here so yeah let's, let's, move, let's next move on to the last two external territories we've got the herd island and uh, mcdonald islands it's a bunch of non-populated non really anything islands in the middle of the <laughs> uh you know indian ocean it's really 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 far away from pretty much anything i mean it just it exists here, and it's a thing, and at some point, I'm sure they'll do something with it, but for now, it's just one of the most remote territories, like, uh, you know, the Australian government were like, you know, it'd be nice if we had a territory there, and I guess they said, yeah, sure, why not? It's it's far away, you know, from uh, the rest of uh, <laughs> Australia than it is from pretty much any, again, like, the distances are insane, as I covered in other videos. Uh, it's about the same, it's actually, it's closer to Madagascar than it is to Australia. So I'm just saying, give the ter territory to Madagascar, just for fun, you know, like, Madagascar needs an empire to Australia. So, the final place, if you haven't guessed already, is actually gonna be, um, the uh, Antarctic Territory that belongs to Australia. So this is the largest uh, chunk of, uh, you know, Antarctica that is claimed by a country. Technically speaking, Antarctica can't be claimed, and is also claimed at the same time. It's complex, look up the treaty, but the short story is that this is half valid claim. So it's never gonna, if anything comes of this, the international community will stop Australia. But for now, Australia administers this part right here and then this part right here. And you know how at the start of the video, I said that Australia borders France. Guess what? Here's that border. Australia borders France in two separate places in Antarctica. Again, their claims are somewhat dubious, but it's vaguely accepted as just like, a, well, we're doing it for science, so it's all fine. And yeah, in case you're curious, the uh, the main station station for the Australian uh, Arctic mission, Antarctic mission, is uh, Davis Station. And honestly, I, I part of me thinks, like, if there's going to be anyone that gets to claim Antarctica, shouldn't we give that power to Australia? Like, again, when you look at it on a map, like, Australia's there, Antarctica's there. I mean, like, if, if anyone can do it, why not Australia? Like, <laughs> or at least this part of Australia. It's like, I know that's a very arbitrary reason, and that's not, like, a good enough reason to actually stand up for it. But again, I, I like the idea of, like, why not as a, as a reason to give it to Australia. So, before we go today, because that's uh, Australia's seven ex... So, Australia has six states. Western Australia, South Australia, New South Wales, Victoria, 
Queensland, Tasmania, three territories, the Northern Territory, the uh, Australian Capital Territory, and Jervis, Jarvis, Gervais Bay. Um, <laughs> and then the, they've got seven six external, external islands. That is the Empire of Australia. That is what makes up the Commonwealth of Australia, which again, I, I love that they're called, their official full name is the Commonwealth of Australia. Um, but let's talk about some of the other weird things that are just to do with Australia that you won't necessarily realize. Uh, you know, some of it is travel related, some of it is just weird related. Because, for instance, first of all, the time zones in Australia, so I said earlier, the states don't get along. They don't get along on, like, so many levels. So, they, they can't agree on time zones on, like, in almost a, a comical way. So, here are the time zones of Australia, as you can see, uh, for half the year, all the states agree that, you know, like, oh yeah, let's rip up eight, nine and a half, and then ten. Uh, but because some of the states have uh, daylight savings times and some of them don't, uh, during these some you know during daylight savings times, guess what? We're in this situation where there's five separate time zones. Basically, every province has its own one. Very very weird, confusing thing. Um, then we've also got the fact that uh, every one of the states, again, very very far away from each other, with surprisingly little infrastructure to connect them. And part of that is because you don't need much infrastructure. But like seriously, look at the number of roads that connect Western Australia to the rest of the continent. There's like one here, and then as far as I'm aware, okay, no, that one stops. For oh. That, that technically counts as a road, but there's very, very few, despite having an entire continent share, shared between the two. And again, whether it's like poor cooperation or just lack of need for it, you can argue about. And also, again, the center of the place. Uh, oh, I haven't mentioned Aboriginals at all. That's a whole thing. I haven't mentioned the fact that until 1970, they had an act in place where only white people could go to Australia. But now, since that's been abolished, there's a lot of uh, migration from Eastern Asia. So like the Australian identity is shifting from being like, oh yeah, we're we're like Englishmen down in the south, yeah, to being over there. And also the final thing is the fact that the fact that Australia and the UK have this deep link. So again, I can't describe this, but anyone who watches the videos from Australia, there's something about this that maybe you agree with, maybe you don't. And there's something about everyone in the UK where it's like, oh yeah, Australia, that's like that that friendly place all the way over there. But we're literally on almost opposite sides of the earth to Australia. Like seriously, uh, to get from Australia to like anywhere is a long distance. Like again, Australia to like you know, Middle East, you're talking like 16, 17 hours. Australia to America, 16 hours. Australia to like anywhere, you know, it's really far. But Australia to the UK, it's like if you want to go from Eastern Australia at least, it's a 24 hour journey minimum. After all of these, you know, centuries, decades of progression, it's still a full day to travel between one to the other. And um, again, it's just one of those weird things. And the simple explanation for that, in case you're like, you know, you want the cliff notes, is that the UK just settled a bunch of islands all around the world. Uh, that's the common trend with most of the successful settlements. And Australia just turned out to be an island so big, it was a continent. And just because it's on the other side of the world, why should that stop things? So yeah, very, very bizarre. And also, the, the, this is this is my final point I'll mention. Uh, as far as like, uh, you know, the, the prisoner rumor, like, because this is one of those things where like, I feel like you hear it as an urban rumor, but it's actually true. A lot of prisoners from uh, the UK were actually sent to, uh, you know, uh, Australia as a form of banishment, just like, you know, you commit a crime, and it's not bad enough to kill you, but it is bad enough that we don't want you around our civilization. So we sent a bunch of people to Australia. So the you know the original population of Australia is Aboriginals. The next level is then prisoners, <laughs> and then it's just like generic you know white settlers. And now it's like evolving. And where I I don't know. There's something very confusing about a country which, in the course of four centuries, has gone from like you know native people to prisoners to white people to Asian. And you know I just there's a weird progression there and. Let's see where it goes next, you know? Like, maybe the kangaroos will take over. That's something we'll have to wait and see. But for now, I hope you all enjoyed today's uh, video on Australia. Let me know what you think. And second channel, don't care. Goodbye.